Hi. Today, I thought we could have a vocabulary lesson. A lot of you have said that you like learning new words and like learning in general while you relax. So, I thought we could make note cards uh, or um, flash cards um, and that way we can work on our vocabulary together or you can just relax and listen uh, I have chosen words that uh, don't necessarily have a lot of method behind them. They are just uh, words that I enjoy, and so some of them are uh, pretty common. Some of them are a little bit more archaic or obscure. But what we're going to do is take a note card and then write one of the words and the definitions on it. And then I will hold them up and we can go over them together. Okay? Just go ahead and get started. Um, I'll be using my faithful pencil to write down all the words. So, <laughs> okay, we're going to start with the word assiduity. Assiduity means like a constant, close attention to what one is doing. Constant or close attention to what one is doing. Just make each note card like this. And if you want, you can follow along and make your own. Or like I said, you can just lie back and listen. And I will try to have assiduity as I make the video. And I love to write with pencils. They make me feel so studious. Anyway, okay. The second word is vitiate. 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 And vitiate is to uh, spoil or impair the quality or efficiency of something. So, to spoil or impair the quality or efficiency
You can see we're already developing quite a collection of cards. The next word, I really like the sound of, although it is mm, sort of like a PG-13 word. The word is lascivious. Lascivious. Lascivious <laughs> and the spelling is sort of like the word. It, it always sounds like Vesuvius, like the mountain, the volcano. Vesuvius. <laughs> Vesuvius. <laughs> Lascivious. It's bad when you conflate words like that. You start to come up with strange combination words in your mind. Anyway, so lascivious is uh, describing a person or a mannerism or a gesture that might not be appropriate and may be seen as overt or even uh, suggestive. Overt or suggestive. Lascivious. Not to be confused with Vesuvius. <laughs> Quite different. Okay. The next word sounds like reticent, but it's different. The word is redolent. 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 And redolent has a more modern meaning. Uh, being uh, evocative of something, so uh, something may feel reminiscent to you. Uh, but its archaic term meant um, smelling or fragrant, so you may walk into a garden that is redolent with the smell of roses, uh, and in the same way um, that garden could be redolent of romance or a memory so suggesting something, which is how we often use it now. So, uh, so redolent, let's say, is strongly reminiscent. or suggestive but 
but it could also be fragrant. So we'll say fragrant. Maybe make a note that that's a more archaic or literary application of the word redolent. But I think it's quite lovely. Redolent. Redolent. This word is always funny. <laughs> I think there's a few ways to pronounce this next word, so... <laughs> but I've always heard it as uh, either puissant or puissant. Puissant? I believe it's more correct. Puissant. Puissant. P -u -i a-N-T Poison <laughs> And Poison means Having great power Or influence So You could say Someone is a most Poison Politician or Most poison lord <laughs> These words um, may seem uh, particularly related to uh, fantasy or literary tradition. I, I made a pretty random list, so <laughs> usually the words I'm thinking of are um, words I've been reading a lot lately. <laughs> you may notice weird patterns. Okay, speaking of, um, this is a similar word, uh, it sounds kind of like a dog, but it's not, it's the word dogorel, dogorel, um, and this is a fun word, uh, it can mean basically um, like poorly written or uh, badly expressed words um, can be used as a derogative way of describing literature or writing <laughs> but it can also be used in sort of a comic way <laughs> so you can use it to be rather insulting if you want to <laughs> Anyhow, uh, doggerel. I think it's, I think it's doggerel. Like I said, a lot of these words I read them more often than I hear them. So you'll forgive me if any of my pronunciation is uncommon. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, so rippers, horrors, let's say lacking. Substance or artfulness, maybe. <laughs> and can also be used for comic effect. Hopefully won't hear as many. Okay. Kith is a word I like. Kith. Kith. 
very simple monosyllabic word, Kiev. And Kiev is more like you guys. Uh, your Kiev, uh, all your familiar friends, your loved ones, your neighbors, your gang, you know, your Kiev. Kiev. So you have kin, kin, and kin, of course, are your, your blood relatives and your family. And your kiev might expand beyond that. Your kiev. So, could be upside down. <laughs> so, kiev can be your friend. Your social group. They can all be part of your kiff. Kiff. And again, like I said, some of these are are very small words, and a lot of them are sort of common, but. I just think they're nice. Some of them are less common too. Some of them are quite strange. Uh, oh, here's a word I like. Vaunted. Vaunted. Uh, vaunted. Sounds like haunted, but it means something quite different. Vaunted. And if something is vaunted, it is often praised or celebrated. So uh, you might call someone a most vaunted leader, or uh, there might be um, a most vaunted coffee shop or something. Vaunted is nice. We'll say vaunted is often praised. Often praised. Or spoken highly of. Feather Feather is a very vaunted ASM word. <laughs> it's an example I like. Benedict Cumberbatch is a vaunted actor. Okay. Oh, this is a strange word. I don't even know why I included it, except I like it so much. It's actually rather specific. The word is crawl. 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 Hmm. Now, crawl is a, a specific word to mean the uh, the area in the back of a bird's throat where food can be stored, so kind of like a, a gullet, but um, a crawl is a word I like. Again, some of these words I like because it's always fun to use creative insults, <laughs> so and I might say, you know, uh, shove it down your craw, you know. <laughs> That's not very nice, but sometimes it's fun to just to, to use uh, inventive language, colorful insults. <laughs> so, anyway, craw. Um, an area. And a
crown. I actually really, really love birds. <laughs> I love birds. I love how they, uh, they don't have arms. <laughs> and I love how they, uh, they sort of walk instead of flying sometimes. I love how birds just walk around. Anyway. Okay. How about Here's a fun word. The word is obfuscate. This is a very useful word. Obfuscate. Sometimes you'll notice I check my spelling on these because uh, I'm, I'm not a strong speller. Really. <laughs> Once in a while, I get a word wrong and it's embarrassing, so... <laughs> Obfuscate. Obfuscate. Um, and uh, to obfuscate something is to, uh, to hide it, or to make it obscure, or to make something vague. Uh, to be very sneaky. And, um... Obfuscate is often used in uh, political terms and even in judicial terms. Um, so uh, it's actually probably a, a rather litigious word sometimes. Obfuscate. 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 So let's just say to render. Or, or make vague. And, or unintelligible. Unintelligible. See, unintelligible is one of those words that has... It should be the simplest word, and then... Um, whenever there's the, like, double letters, and I don't know, <laughs> I always say, And you can remember it because there's a root mm. that sounds like obscure, obfuscate, to make obscure. So it's a little memory device. I always use mnemonic devices uh, and little memory tricks when I can. So here's a word. This is another word that's very specific, but I quite love the sound of it, and I think it can be a sort of a poetic or metaphorically used word outside of its very specific use. And the word is fallow. 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 Doesn't that sound nice? I think it does. Fallow. Fallow. It's pretty. Fallow. Fallow. I think that's right. Um, and fallow means uh, unsown or uh, unenriched farmland. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you can understand how, how that might be an interesting, uh, poetic use, fallow. Um, if your farmland is uncultivated, uh, it's kind of an interesting image. So, fallow. Um, so, let's just say, unsold. Or uncultivated farmland mm -hmm. 
I've seen the word follow used uh, to describe um, potential, to describe certain kinds of biology, reproduction, all kinds of things. But I think it's a, it's a kind of one of those pretty words, fallow. Well, here's a word I like. I like the word moldering. Moldering. And some of these words have uh, suffixes on them. Moldering, obviously, has. I'm writing it with the gerund, ing, the gerund. Um, but. I like it as an active word, so moldering. 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 And obviously without the gerund, the word molder. Moldering. And moldering is, um, if something is decaying, right? Uh, if something is, um, decaying or deteriorating or rotting um, from neglect. So moldering um, is, we'll say that, moldering, decaying, um, or decomposing, maybe, deteriorating. Um, And yeah, typically from neglect. So there might be a, like a moldering ruin. Again, the word itself isn't necessarily a, a pretty one, but it's one of those great descriptive words, moldering. It feels rather fantastical or epic or romantic. Moldering is dramatic, isn't it? I think so. Um, here's another one. Is I realize a lot of the words I chose that I think are pretty actually mean <laughs> quite the opposite, <laughs> like this word. But again, it's just a great descriptive word. And those are always the words I'm I'm drawn to, uh, not necessarily the largest ones or the strangest ones, but uh, just the ones that that catch my ear and that sort of help um, paint a picture. So this word is fetid, 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 fetid. It actually means something uh, that it smells very unpleasant. So, if something were moldering, the air might be rather fetid. But I just like saying it. Fetid. 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 I don't know why. Fetid. 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 Anyway. It is um, smelling quite unpleasant. So, smelling extremely unpleasant. That is. Another word, sort of similar, that just sounds like what it means is languid, 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 the 
Doesn't it just feel like a, a lazy word? Language. Language. Um, it means that uh, you display or show a lack of, uh, of uh, physical um, exertion or uh, to be very slow, to be very lazy even. So you could have uh, even like a relaxed kind of language. So maybe you're having a very languid evening and you're just sort of laying back and it's, it's quite languid, languid. <laughs> so we can say slow or relaxed or showing. A disinclination for physical exertion. Exertion. Languid. Languid. Isn't it sort of lovely? It's one of those words that you could use in sort of a nice Almost a nice, sweet way of languid afternoon on the beach, or mm, it could be used in an insulting way as well, languid. And of course, that's, that's the true beauty of, of all of these words. They're yours to modify and use. So. Okay. Uh, another word that sounds a little bit like languid, but it's quite different, and it's one of my favorite words, uh, the word limpid, 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 and so um, I think limpid is a somewhat innocent sounding word, <laughs> limpid. Because limpid means to be clear and uncloudy. So I like the idea of someone having bright, open, limpid eyes. Clear, limpid eyes. And of course, it could be used in many ways. Um, there could be limpid water. A limpid stream. I suppose someone could even have uh, very uh, limpid motives. Something that is quite clear, uh, quite unclouded. Mm -hmm. Limpid. I feel like in a lot of the books I read from earlier centuries, there's always, you know, some heroine with, with limpid eyes, you know, and, and she starts out as very innocent, and, uh, and then, you know, she sees the world for what it is. Anyway, limpid. limpid. This is a fun word to use. This is a word that I don't even know why I included. I think because it's fun to say. Um, not so fun to think about for me, but the word is pecuniary. 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 <laughs> and um, this word is Having to do with, um, with money or finances, pecuniary, so, um, basically something that, that is related to or about or of money, pecuniary, pecuniary, and 
It makes me think of the word porcupine, and it, it isn't even close, but I like the words together if they were a, a pecuniary, a pecuniary porcupine <laughs> or something, I don't know. Anyway, pecuniary of or related to money and finances. to describe an expression, baleful. A lot of these words, I think, could be good for, uh, for building and introducing characters, if you're into that, if you like to write fiction, maybe. I think a lot of these words are good for describing uh, people and describing places. That's probably why I've chosen a lot of them. Um, and how about one more? <laughs> uh, and it, this is act this is actually a word. I'm not completely positive on the pronunciation, though I think it's I think it's Herodin. Maybe Herodin. Herodin. I think it's Herodin. Uh, it's one of those words that I read, um, but I don't know if I've heard people say it. So uh, the word. Anyway, it's spelled this way. It's spelled H 
A R R I D A N. Harden, Harden, Harid. I think it's Harden. Um, Harden is kind of like a like a chrome. Um, maybe. Also, sometimes more comically used, uh, like the word curmudgeon. Curmudgeon. That's, that's a word everyone likes. And calling someone an old miserly curmudgeon. Um, and Herodin, um, like the word crone, um, specifies a woman. Uh, and, um, an old woman, just like the word crone, and uh, it means someone who's like a bossy, rude, and mean old woman. You might use the word hag. <laughs> um, Herodin. Herodin. So let's just say strict, uh, controlling. Or uh, belligerent. <laughs> Old woman. Old woman. You know, there are just there are so many. Uh, there are so many words for for old women. It's not. That's not so fair. Although there's plenty of words for old men too, but um, I don't know. Most of the older women I know are, are nothing like this. But like I said, this is one of those great words for describing someone in fiction, you know. Tell that old harridan to stuff it down her craw, you know, something like that. So, um, so I think that's enough words for today. I don't know if this has been fun or helpful. Um, I'll we'll just go over the words one more time in case you are trying to retain any of them. Um, and like I said, you may very well know all these words already. Uh, I just have them to like them. So, reticent, reticence, and as we've written down, reticent is not revealing one's thoughts or feelings readily. Reticent. Mm. Uh, our first word. Assiduity. Assiduity means assiduity is constant or close attention to what one is doing. Assiduity. You can do your work with great assiduity. Uh, vitiate, which is such a great word. To vitiate. And as we've written, vitiate is to, uh, to spoil or impair the quality or efficiency of. To vitiate. Even if someone shows great assiduity in their task, you could um, vitiate or undermine their efforts. So, these are out of order, I apologize. Harridan, that we just talked about. A strict, controlling, or belligerent old woman. A Harridan. Hopefully, I won't grow up to be one. <laughs> baleful. Baleful and baleful. Threatening harm or menacing. Baleful. Pecuniary. Pecuniary. Which is of or relating to money and 
pecuniary. Limpid. The word limpid. And limpid means clear and unclouded. Limpid. Maybe you have a very limpid sense of judgment. Languid. Languid. I hope this has been somewhat languid, slow, or relaxed. Or, more derogatorily, could be showing a disinclination for physical exertion. I was always languid in my PE classes. We had to do a run once a week on Wednesdays, and I always became quite languid. Fetid. Fetid. And, of course, fetid is smelling extremely unpleasant. Fetid. I find cat food to be quite fetid. my cats love it. Cats love cat food. You heard it here. <laughs> See, we're learning all kinds of things today. Moldering. Moldering. And as we talked about, moldering can be decaying or deteriorating due to neglect. Word for farmers, fallow, fallow. Hello to any of you farmers out there. Fallow, and fallow means unsowed or uncultivated farmland. Fallow. Off the To render obscure, or make vague, or unintelligible. Obfuscate, again, sounds a bit like the word obscure, so that's a good way to remember. Obscure. Obfuscate. I've actually heard it said, obfuscate, obfuscate, um, obfuscate. may depend on your dialect or preference for pronunciation. I've always, I've always heard it, um, obfuscate, but some people stress that obfuscate, obfuscate, so. Crawl. Crawl. And again, this is one of those specific words. Um, and it's the area in a bird's throat where food can be stored. Crawl. Like a gullet. Crawl. Crawl. I like it because it sounds like a mix between the word crow and the onomatopoeia ka, ka, ka. So, crawl sounds a bit like crow and a bit like so I like it. Craw, craw, craw. Vaunted. Vaunted. Vaunted is often praised or spoken highly of. Vaunted. Vaunted. And Kip is such a nice word, meaning friends, loved ones, 
or your social group uh, people who are like you who come from where you come from um, kith your kith your, your gang your clan your posse people your kith kith and again kith so a bit like the word kin so you have your kin and your kith and I hope you have lots of both. Yeah. Doggerel. Doggerel. Doggerel, maybe? Doggerel? Doggerel? Some of these I know have multiple pronunciations. Um, and it is a um, verse or words. Uh, I wrote lacking substance or artfulness. Um, it could also be sort of comic or the way someone might go off on a, a comic rant. So, Doggerel, 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 Doggerel. Poison? Puissant, 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 puissant. This one has a little bit of subtlety to the way you say it, I think. Puissant, 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 puissant. Anyway, um, and this just means having great power or influence. confused with Vesuvius. So, anyhow, I hope this has been sort of fun. Um, feel free to correct any of my pronunciations. I think that uh, one of the very fun things about reading is that you, you often learn to pronounce words a certain way in your head, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Sometimes years later, I'll realize that my pronunciations of things are, are quite off, but I'm fairly confident in most of these ones, and uh, I hope that it has been sort of fun to make these flashcards, uh, and yeah, I would love it if you would share some of your favorite words in the comments so I can add them. Uh, our flashcards here, and if other people are making flashcards, they can add them too. I think that would be a fun thing to do together. So, anyway, <laughs> let's not end on this word. How about we end with this one? Because you're my kid. you a very good day or a very good night and I look forward to hearing all about some of your favorite words uh, so please do share them with me and I'll see you really really soon I hope